the Miami Dolphins made history last night by extending their winning streak to seven games after already amassing a seven-game losing streak. With that win, the Dolphins have put themselves into the best possible position when it comes to the playoffs, win and you're in. Miami defense has been playing lights out during this winning streak, feasting on opposing quarterbacks. The offense, for the most part, has been relatively consistent and has done enough to put up some points. A lot of that is due to quarterback Tua Tungavailoa play as he has generally proven an ability to move this offense and keep drives alive. Over the first six games of this winning streak, Tungavailoa has played well. On Monday night, he was much shakier. Tungavailoa finished the day 19 of 26 for 198 yards, one touchdown and one interception. These numbers aren't much different from some of the other stat lines Tua achieved over this winning streak, but it came against an exceptionally depleted Saints roster. In this game, Tua should have been able to prove that he is capable of leading this offense to touchdowns, not field goals, and generating points that can keep up with some of the tougher offenses they are going to see in the next two weeks. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. The measly 13 points that the offense put up on Monday isn't all Tua's fault. Even though the offensive line is playing a little better, they are still bad and there were a lot of moments where Tua had to dodge Saint defenders who were in the backfield instantly. Outside of Jalen Waddell, Miami receivers didn't do a great job of getting separation over the course of the entire game. The running game was also not great, again. Yet, there were a few moments that were on Tua, notably his interception that killed a drive that could have put the game away. On third and nine, Tua tried to force the ball to Mac Hollins down the middle of the field. Hollins was double covered and Tua overthrew him, leading to the interception. The reason that this was one of the more frustrating plays Tua has made this year is because Waddle, by far his favorite receiver, was wide open for the first down basically right in front of Hollins. If Tua makes the right read, maybe the Dolphins can add more points to their lead. He didn't, however, and Tua proved that he still needs to work on a few things to be elite in this league. I have always been a believer in Tua and that hasn't changed after Monday night game. His play needs context and those that are hypercritical need to remember the lack of talent along Miami offensive line and the inconsistent receiving corp, outside of Waddle. Give that man, rookie of the year, already. That being said, Tua does need to work on some things in order to take this offense to the next level, specifically reading the field and not trying to do more than is necessary to keep the ball moving. The defense won't be able to bail this team out all of the time, especially with the Titans and Patriots coming up in Miami playoff hopes back on the line. The number of players on the Miami Dolphins' COVID-19 list has now reached double digits. The day after they handled the COVID-ravaged New Orleans Saints at the Superdome, the Miami Dolphins' own COVID-19 issues got worse. The team announced Tuesday it had placed four more players on the reserve COVID-19 list, four of them going there from the active roster. The four players moved to reserve COVID-19 list from the active roster Tuesday were wide receiver Preston Williams, defensive lineman Adam Butler, safety Brandon Jones and defensive tackle John Jenkins. Guard Derval Keraz Netu was placed on the practice squad, COVID-19 list. Along with the COVID-related moves, the Dolphins placed wide receiver, return specialist Tommy Lee Lewis and running back Jordan Scarlett on the practice squad injured list. Both players were elevated from the practice squad as COVID-19 replacements for the game against New Orleans. Lewis sustained a hip injury in the second quarter and didn't return, there were no other Dolphins injuries reported in the press box. The Dolphins now have 13 players on the COVID-19 list, along with the five put on there Tuesday. Wide receiver Albert Wilson, tight end Seathan Carter, cornerback Justin Coleman, linebacker Duke Riley, center, guard Greg Mance, guard Robert Jones, wide receiver Alan Hearns and wide receiver Lynn Bowden Jr. Hearns and Bowden are on the injured reserve COVID-19 list and out for the season regardless. Among the latest players put on the list, the most significant no doubt is Brandon Jones, who had a sack and an interception in the 20-3 victory against the Saints on Monday night. Jones has started 11 games this season, including each of the past nine games he's played. Jones missed two games in December because of an elbow injury. With his ability to blitz and tackle, Jones is an important player for what the Dolphins like to do on defense. Jenkins was inactive against the Saints on Monday night, while Williams was one of three players who were active but didn't play. Butler, meanwhile, played a season-low 21 snaps against New Orleans. If the Dolphins need help up front on defense, the two linemen on the practice squad are veteran Andrew Billings and second-year player Benito Jones. Tennessee's COVID situation. For those keeping score at home, the Titans currently have 10 players on their reserve COVID-19 list, 
including wide receiver Julio Jones, linebacker Bud Dupree and starting left tackle Taylor Lewin. The Titans placed linebacker Jayon Brown on Tuesday, along with practice squad wide receiver Cody Hollister. The others are guard Nate Davis, cornerback Caleb Farley, Kendall Lamb, cornerback Buster Scrine and wide receiver Nick Westbrook-Ikine.